once again, I'd uh, like to invite Robin back to the stage to uh, talk about water monitoring uh, technology in more detail. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Paige, again. Um, just while well, slow slides are coming, who has water monitoring on their property at the moment? Can I have a show of hands? A good, a good amount? I think we can improve that. Um, for me, water monitoring is one of the low-hanging fruit. It is just going to give you really good bang for your buck and it is actually going to be a really a good cost saving for you. So why have water monitoring? Uh, so it removes the risk of stock not actually having water, which is going to be the biggest issue, especially during summer. If you have an out of water event during summer and your stock are seeking out water, they're going to be losing condition. They're going to be um, dying. That's a huge cost to you. And with water monitoring, we can solve that. So we can pick up with water monitoring, depending on what it is that you particularly want to look for, we can pick up leaks, we can break, um, pick up broken pipes, broken troughs, pump failures, and the tank water monitoring as well. So we have had many instances here at Struan. Um, one was out at Kybe. So Kybe is about a 30 minute um, drive over to Kybe. Um, and it was the end of May. The ewes hadn't um, just almost started lambing and the tank was completely empty. And what happened was the pump completely failed. And so that needed an electrician to come in and fix it. But if we didn't actually pick up that there was an out of water event over at Kybe, nobody was going to be there for well over a week. And that would have caused quite a big issue. So if you are also operating off of reticulated water instead of bore water, you are going to have a heck of a lot more costs if you have a leak anywhere. So some of the technology I'll go through can also not just pick up um, tank height water levels, but also leaks as well. So we'll go through that as well. Um, a lot of producers also do tell me, oh, but I, you know, I go out and check on my stock anyways, and I'm also checking the water. Absolutely, you will can continue to do that. Um, with our, within our return on investment um, assumptions, calculations that we've worked out, is we're reducing water runs by 50%. But where the true value is, is that it's actually picking up that out of water event that you went and did the water run on Monday and you had an event happen on Monday afternoon and you're not gonna be back there until Friday. So that's where it really comes into its own, is it's picking up on that risk of in between having a problem. And you might say, oh, that might not happen. It has happened. Um, I did talk to a producer just actually outside an hour court. He has cattle over um, about 100 kilometers away. And he went there on the Monday, no, absolutely no issues. And he got back to the farm at, the, at night, had a look on his dashboard. What? That header tank should be completely full. I just checked it today. It was bone dry. He went back the next day, and this is in the heat of summer as well, and that water monitoring saved him because he wasn't going back there for an, at least another week. And that's 100 kilometres, 200 kilometres return trip as well. Um, and you're, also, if you're not having to check waters, you're also freeing up your um, labour to go do something else. Um, and also... Your vehicle costs are reduced as well, another saving. Some people do ask, why are there subscription costs? Um, like, I don't want to pay the subscription costs. If you get a phone, you're paying for the subscription costs every month. You're paying for that use of a, a 3G card to actually transmit that data, or you're paying for the use of a satellite to transmit that data. But we'll go through the return on investments, but when we go through it, your subscription costs every year will be covered just with the use of the water monitoring, reducing that risk or reducing your labour and your um, vehicle costs as well. There are things that you should consider just above and beyond just plain cost. Um, so what is it you want to monitor? Do you want to, do you want to monitor a header tank? Do you want to monitor a particular trough? Do you want to monitor water flow or pump pressure? So with the water flow one is interesting because if you have just a a water monitor on your tank, it may not actually pick up that you've got a, a broken pipe down, way down the, the pipeline. Um, 
and that will actually pick it up because it will actually be leaking overnight. So it'll actually show you a water flow increasing at night when your stock aren't drinking. So that's where you can actually have real cost savings as well, because you may be in really sandy country and you have absolutely no idea that you've got a water link in your pipe and it's costing you a lot. The other thing to consider is what connectivity you need. So if you've got it on a header tank, what's the connectivity at that header tank? You don't need enough reception to, if you're using 3G or 4G, you don't need enough reception that you're, you're making a phone call but you just need at least a minimum one bar of 3G will be enough because it's only transmitting a small amount of data. Um, if you have no 3G, satellite is a very good option. LoRaWAN is also a good option as well. So that's a long range wide area network and we have a LoRaWAN gateway um, supplied here by Goanna Ag. Um, that is an additional cost, um, but where that um, really comes into its own as well is a lot of different technology can actually transmit through the LoRaWAN. So you're reducing that, um, that communication cost by having the LoRaWAN on, on site as well. The other thing to consider is power. So a lot of the um, tech that we have is solar powered. They c some of them can also be mains powered. One is also battery powered. So you just need to think about, do I need to go change a, a battery every six months? Is solar going to be enough for me? You just need to sort of think about those considerations as well. Also, the communication. Do you want a text daily every morning telling you your water is at this height, no need for alarm? Or do you only want a text message when there's actually an issue? So that's something you need to think about as to how you want to operate it yourself. Is the installation simple? Um, Andy and myself have installed a lot of them ourselves. We've found them pretty simple to install. Um, or can it be done by the supplier? Um, and that's just a, another consideration. You might be in knee deep in shearing at that point and having the supplier come in and do it, just taking off that pressure to be to doing that. The other thing is, do you want some add-ons? So you can have just the, the tank monitor telling you the height of the tank. You can have rain gauges on that. You can have flow meters. You can attach pump pressure as well. So it's just a consideration that you want to make as to what it is you want to monitor. Um, also, ask the company, what is your after sales support? Like, can I call a hotline? Can I email you? Can I just call you if there's a problem? And that's information that you do want to f find out from the start before you purchase. Um, and then the cost. So the cost is, is an important consideration, but it's not the only consideration that you need to make. So I'll just go through um, a few that we have on board here at um, Struan and Kaibi. Uh, so we've got Alpha Group, which is a tank monitor and a flow meter. Um, and they can also do things like pump pressure as well as. Um, so what it is is a hydrostatic sensor. Um, so it measures the, the water levels by sensing the pressure of the water above, which is a lot of what the technologies um, do, are all using hydrostatic um, sensors. Alpha Group, they send a daily text message. You can monitor every 24-7. Um, um, solar panelled, compatible also with satellite and or 3G. Um, and the cost of that one is $14.90, excluding GST, with uh, $250 a, 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 with just for the leak detection unit. Um, and the annual subscription cost is $250 um, per year for the initial unit. If you have multiple units, that price comes down. We've also got um, FarmBot on board as well. Again, a hydrostatic sensor. Um, this one sends a text message when there's alerts. Um, so more often than not, I get an alert telling me that the height of the tank is above 190 centimetres. I just need to get to that and change, change it to 190.5 centimetres so I stop getting those alerts. Um, but the really important one is when it's um, falling. Um, at the rate of fall is quite substantial or it's hit that 75% um, water level height is when it sends me an alert. Uh, again, online dashboard available 24-7, solar panelled. Um, this one was very easy to install. I think it took us like 10 minutes and by the time we got back to the office it was up and running. Um, and this one is 1290, excluding GST. And there's just a little bit of a difference. The satellite connections will be um, more expensive than your cellular connections as well. This one um, 
we are using water rat from Farmo as a trough sensor. Uh, it can be used as a, a tank sensor as well. So what you do is you actually tether that sensor to the top of the tank because you don't want your alert to be when your tank's empty. So we tether it to the top of the tank, 75, 50% height level, and then it sends us an alert. And what happens is it tilts. So if your cattle are actually, or your sheep or anything, are actually coming in, it's a really hot day, and they've just completely drunk all of the water out of the trough, and your water rat has tipped over. If your trough then actually writes itself, it then sends you another alert to say, actually, I'm all good, um, there's no need. We did actually have an issue just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was tilting and alerting and then writing itself constantly. <laughs> um, so we went out there, had a look at it. Uh, what happened was the trough was filling so slowly because there were beetles stuck in the pipeline. And so we just cleaned all of these beetles out. I didn't do it, I'm taking credit for coops. Um, but we cleaned out that pipe then the trough is refilled and I've stopped getting those those alerts. So again, it has picked up on that issue where I'm just like, it's going up and down with there's, there's an issue out there. So what happened was the, yeah, the cattle came, completely drank the trough dry, broke off our bullcock as well. Uh, but we have, yeah, fixed that, so it's all good. Um, so this one is, again, an online dashboard 24-7s, battery operated. Um, this one is only 3G, 4G. Um, and it's 545 excluding um, GST as well. We also got um, Goanna Ag, so Go Tank, again another hydrostatic sensor. Um, this one is different to the other ones. This one is battery powered. So we're changing the batteries about every five to six months. Um, C type battery as well. Uh, again, alerts are sent via text message, um, online dashboard. And this one is compatible with satellite or LoRaWAN. So like I said before, the LoRaWAN gateway is Goanna Ag. So all of our Goanna Ag tank monitors down on the flat here at Struan operate through LoRaWAN. Um, and we've also got a Goanna Ag tank monitor out at Kybe that's actually operating off of satellites. So haven't had any issues with other one. So return on investment with water monitoring. So again, I went through before, same assumptions, $50 an hour, 72 um, cents a kilometer. Um, what we have made these assumptions on is we're halving the number of trips um, to do that, that water run. So we're not taking it out completely. You're still going to be doing it, especially during summer. Um, you're still checking on your livestock. Um, so again, I apologize if you can't read this. Again, we have everything printed if you want to um, grab anything and take it away with you. So return on investment figures. So they um, do differ um, because they are differing in their total cost, but there's, again, the cost isn't the be all and end all. There are other considerations that you need to make as to which one's actually gonna work best for you. Um, so this is only, also I'll just point out, this is the return on investment for just the first year. So we've got um, in the tent, you can take away the return on investments with you. So we go up to three years of return on investment and every one of them pays itself back and then some. What we also have on board is Pear Tree here as well. And Pear Tree is really good because we do have a lot of technology and that's collaborating and co sorry, collating all of the technology for us. So we're not looking at Farmbot, Gowana Ag, Farmo. And I think if we did that, I think Coops might actually kill me. Um, so what we have got is Pear Tree and that just really brings everything together in one easy dashboard. And I can just go, everything green, it's good. Um, so if you see this um, flashes yellow and red, if there's a problem. And so that's really good and easy to um, just pick up on like what is actually an issue and staff can do that in a matter of seconds. Um, so what we've also done is set up a, a um, TV in the meeting, uh, not meeting room, um, in the, our lunch room. So the staff are sitting there and they can easily look at this um, so yeah, they came in the other day and all of this was flashing. So right, we need to get onto those. So it really just does collate everything for us. Um, and Hamish from Pear Tree is here today. So Pear Tree does a lot more. Um, so yeah, please go up and um, talk to Hamish about everything else that um, we're using on Pear Tree. 
So just in summary, the critical considerations for water monitoring. What is it you want to monitor? Um, what is going to be best for you? Do you also want to monitor water flow, rain, um, pump pressure as well? Uh, depending on what you need, the costs are not going to be the most important thing to you, um, in my opinion. Um, the connectivity is probably one of the biggest considerations you're going to have to make. Um, in our um, case studies as well, we've done a little bit of a water monitoring um, decision table as well. So you can line up and just go, yeah, okay, no, no, I need 3G, so this is the ones that are going to work for me. Um, and also, again, anything that you want to see, please come and um, have a, a look at it. Um, just, yeah, contact us. And the other thing is after sales support. Again, before you purchase, just what's your after sales support? Can I call you if there's a problem? Um, that's a really big consideration. Again, I'll go on about this all day. Farm tour, please, if you need anything, and you just just to see it physically, please come out and see us.